Well, hello everyone. I'm Pastor Daryl Shack here at the Greater New Liberty Church in Memphis, Tennessee, 250 East Range Road in the heart of Whitehaven. Thank you again for tuning in to TGAN Time. This is our midweek Bible study and we are so appreciative of you being a part of our family again. I want to encourage you now that you would call someone, uh, a friend, a neighbor, a loved one, uh, those of you who are disciples of Greater New Liberty, again, I encourage you uh, to call our family and remind them of our 630 uh, Bible study. Listen, we have been dropping in our uh, watching the broadcast and uh, our participating in online uh, service. It is a trick of the enemy to get us out of the Word of God and I want to encourage each and every one of you I hope and pray that it's not the Word itself uh, or the person in whom is, is teaching it but I want to encourage us that sometimes we get lazy sometimes we get off track and some some of us are just fed up with the online part of Bible study and not being able to physically go into the building uh, but I want us to combat that trick of the enemy and to get back into our Bible studies. As we are nearing our cycle of getting back into the sanctuary, to our worship center, uh, I will announce that at the end of service when we're exactly going to do that. But uh, I want to encourage you and, and uh, invite you to join us tonight uh, in this Bible study. So call somebody. Uh, call you at least seven people this time. We usually say three, but this time I want you to call at least seven people and watch. I know, I know what many of you are saying, what, it, what you have said to me is that one of the benefits of the online service is that if you don't watch it at the 6.30 hour or at our appointed time on Sunday mornings, 10 o'clock, then you can watch it a little bit later and that's convenient for you. So I do understand that. Uh, but I do want to uh, encourage us to get more people involved in the Word of God, for it is our health and our strength spiritually. Would you bow your heads with us now as we prepare in prayer for our Bible study? God, we thank you for this, our time together in your Word and in wisdom. We pray that you would bless us uh, tonight. We thank you that you have allowed us to have this mechanism to be able to use to go into the homes and the hearts of many. I pray that you would speak to us today, that we might be able to say the things that are pleasing to you, that will help us to be whom you've called us to be and to do the things that you require of us. We love you with our whole heart and it is our plum pleasing pleasure to be able to share in word tonight. I pray, Father, for understanding. I pray that you allow us to teach with simplicity and with complete clarity that every person who hears your word may be able to impart it upon their own lives and to be able to go out and live a life more pleasing to you. Thank you again for the privilege of being able to teach. We love you with our heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. So tonight, our Bible study is going to come from the book of Mark. We invite you to join us in Mark chapter 8, around verse 22. That's Mark chapter 8, around verse 22, is where we'd like to begin our reading tonight. Mark chapter 8, verse 22. And here's what it says. And he comes to Bethesda. And they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand, led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up and he was restored and saw every man clearly and he sent him away to his house saying neither go into the town nor tell it to any in the town so reads the divinely inspired word of our God 
That is Mark chapter 8, verse 22 through 26. Mark chapter 8, verse 22 through 26. I like to speak to you uh, today from this thought, the favor of focus, the favor of focus. I want to suggest to us that in these trying times, uh, God has been giving us messages uh, to teach that are relative to what we, we're we dealing with now. And in these trying times of dealing uh, with the unfamiliar, of dealing with uh, that that we're not used to, uh, it I know me, it has challenged my focus. It is it often challenges us to remain focused and to make the main thing the main thing. And uh, in this season of trying to stay busy, sometimes we get caught up in so many minor things that we minor in much and we major in nothing. And so I want to challenge us that it's time now for us to get back focus, to get back to what God has uh, called us to do and what has God has purposed us to do. And for many of us, uh, we are even uncertain as to what that is. And I want to challenge us uh, to make our prayer life so uh, particular, steady and to the point that we understand it is important for us to ask God to bring forth revelation for each of us as individuals that we can understand what's our focus to be upon. And uh, so it's time to get back in the saddle. It's time uh, to get back. I know we're not back to norm. I told you uh, before, I don't even know if we will be able to go back to what we know as normal. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in conversations with some other preachers and pastors about what the new norm is really going to be. The the what's the what's the new idea of church and the new idea of worship really going to be and some of it I think that it's a big uh, exaggeration going on uh, because I think it's the fear of dealing with the unknown there's so much that we don't know how things are gonna play out and what's gonna come next but I do believe that something good is going to come out of this. I believe that much good has already come out of it, but I do believe that, that something good is going to come out of it. So tonight's lesson is about teaching us that there's a particular favor on our lives uh, that, that God is going to bring forth a focus out of this. He's going to refocus us. I'm believing God to refocus us on some things that are pertinent and, and, and purposeful in our lives. And so I want I want to uh, render unto you some good news tonight and to, to get you to prayerfully recognize that God is the same today, yesterday and forevermore. And so we can tell about God's future endeavors by what God has done in his previous endeavors. What he's done in the word of God will tell us what he's doing in our lives right now. And so I want to take this text. I know it's a familiar text. I know you've heard it before, but prayerfully I want to uh, lift some things from the text that will hopefully challenge you in being able to see that God is doing some things to refocus you. That now is the time as we're prayerfully coming out of this pandemic. I'm not here to predict how much longer we're going to go on with this. I don't think anybody knows. I think at, at this point, all we're he hearing is conjectures and we're hearing uh, people's opinion of what, what is to occur. But the only person that knows uh, what's going to come and when the answer is going to come, I believe, is God himself. And so what we're going to do is what we always said to do is that we're going to trust God and never doubt. We're going to stay focused. We're going to regain focus and we're going to get back in the saddle. And we're going to even if we have to recreate a norm, if we have to do some things somewhat differently, then that's what we're going to do. But what we will not do is give up. What we will not do is stop. What we will not do is quit. I know all of those are synonymous. I just thought I'd give them to you in three different ways. And so let's go into the word of God as we look at this mysterious text. 
in this book of Mark, this is a story that's a Markan text. It is only given by Mark. That's Markan. It is only given by Mark. No, no other uh, gospel writes this particular uh, miracle that occurs. Mark is the only one that writes of this particular miracle. And that's uniquely so because Mark has been informing us of the miraculous work of the Lord. God in this in 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 this book God has uh, allowed and healed the deaf and and mute man, the woman with the issue of blood, the Lord has delivered lepers, the Lord has delivered um a man with a withered hand, a pair Pelagic man, God has done many, many miracles uh, in this particular book. But here is the first time rendered to us by Mark this particular text of dealing with this man who is blind. The, the, the text says, as Jesus has come to Bethesda, they bring unto him a man who is blind. That, that's the first picture of the night. It is the presentation of a need. And now I want you to, to understand how we are associated in this same text. For Lord knows in this particular time in our lives, we have the presentations of needs. We have many, many needs. Uh, there are so many things going on around and about us. And I don't know about you, but most of the needs that I need right now have nothing to do with things that are physical, things uh, that, that I can actually lay my hands on. But I'm in need of peace. I'm in need of mercy. I'm in need of grace and not, nece not uh, necessarily talking about the norm of peace, of, of mercy, but, but the, the mere stress of dealing with that which is unknown, the mere stress of having an everyday routine that has to do with more than getting out of the bed, sitting in my recliner, looking at TV, using my iPad, looking and talking to the same people every day, all day, without being able to have affiliation with other people, to, I, without being able to go where I want to go and do what I want to do and be where I want to be. And if I want to take my grandchildren out to enjoy a Dave and Buster, I can't go there. I can't go to the movie theater. I want something different in my life than what I'm doing every day for peace sake. And so uh, we have a, the presentation of many, many needs. And you think about what your need is, the need of being able uh, to just have a peace at mind and to be able to do some things that we enjoy doing. That is a need, of course. And so many of us have different and particular needs. And this text brings forth the presentation of a need. And that's important for you to understand because I want you to see how God works when there is a presentation of a need uh, presented to him. There is a man who is brought unto Jesus who has a need. Now, the, the text is tailored to teach us that this is uh, the intercession of a friends. There are other people who brought this man to Jesus, which avails to me the opportunity for us to think about who are we bringing to Jesus in this season? When we're discussing all of the things that are going on in our lives, are we escorting people into the feet of Jesus? Are we yet bringing people into the body of Christ? Are we telling people of the goodness of our God? That's why I'm so adamant about us not speaking negative of God or negative of the church or negative of anything that goes on with the body of Christ, especially in this season because we should be inviting people to come to the Lord as opposed to talking about our dirty laundry of things that are happening in an imperfect church with imperfect people. We fail to talk about a perfected God. And so I want us to think about our challenge and our task uh, that uh, that is challenged and, and, and ordered to us that we would invite people 
to the Lord, that we would intercede in people's lives and it, it, and escort them at the to the feet of Jesus. And that's what happens in this text. There is this man brought into Jesus presence. Uh, and it, it is by the intercession of friends that this occurs in our life. Notice that someone else brings him to Jesus. And so I want to remind you that the thing that we can do, you can escort people into to, to the life of Jesus, uh, one, by introducing them to Christ, by telling them about Christ, and then physically by bringing them to the body of Christ, whether it's our church or any other church, but reminding them that there is a sweet sense of, of silence given unto each of us by the presence of our God. There is a peace that surpasses our understanding just by having a relationship with God. And so there is the presentation of a need rendered into this text where the, the text says that they bring this man unto, the, unto Jesus and they beg of Jesus to touch him. And I want you to know that's what we need right now. We need the touch of the Lord to be present in the lives of each of us today. And I want you to know this is not a time for you to be selfish. If you recognize you need a touch from the Lord, then you recognize that other needs a touch from the Lord also. And listen, I'm not talking about just touching you physically. I'm, we need God to touch our situation. We need God to touch our land. We need God to touch our leaders. We need God to touch our minds. We need God to touch our hearts. We need God to physically touch our bodies, to heal our sick. We need God to be in the hospital with those who have no one in the hospital with them. We need a touch from the Lord to touch our first responders. We need God to touch our nurses, to touch our doctors, to touch our police officers, to touch our firemen, to touch our rescue teams. We need God to touch our military. And Lord knows we need God to touch our president. We need the hands of God. If ever we need God's touch before, we need him right now. Every pastor in the world needs God right now. Every peer member in the world need. We need a touch from the Lord. They beseech God. They beg of him, Lord, touch this man, heal his body. Evidently, something had occurred in his life. I talked about Sunday, how soon we forget. Evidently, they are reminded of the power of God. They are reminded that he touched the deaf. In chapter seven of this very same book, God touches a deaf and mute man, spit, and then touches his tongue and enable him to speak and hear. We need a touch from the Lord. And evidently, they are reminded of how good it is when God touches our situation and they bring this man unto the Lord. That's the first picture in the text. As they bring this man to the Lord, the Bible is tailored to teach us that as they bring him to the Lord, the Bible says in verse 23, and he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town and when he had spit on his eyes, put his hands upon him, and he asked him if he could see anything. It brings me to the second picture in the text is a process that is necessary. There's the presentation of a need, and then there is a process that is necessary. I want you to get that in, in, in your text. God really spoke to my heart uh, in the study of this text and getting me to understand and pressing upon me the importance of trying to, to remind you that, that everything doesn't happen immediately. That sometimes God takes us through a process. And I've been talked about it a lot last year, how we must learn how to trust the process. That sometimes, uh, even though it's God's, even though it's the divine touch of God, sometimes it is yet 
a process that we must go through, that everything doesn't occur all at one time, that some of us right now are in the midst of a process of our life changing, of God doing some things, of God upgrading some things in our lives. We are in the midst of a process, and it is difficult if we don't understand how God works. And I want you to, to understand, to look at this process. The text says that the Lord... Uh, grabs the man by the hand and he leads him out of town. Now I want you to see this picture. The people in the town bring him to Jesus and yet Jesus takes him by the hand and takes him away from the people who brought him. Now, I want you to get that. Some people bring him to Jesus, and yet Jesus takes his hand and leads him away from the people that brought him. Now, I want you to understand this because there, there are several things in the text that I see. The fir first thing that I want you to see is that God takes him away from the people who brought him. God takes him away from the people who brought him. One, I believe God uh, uh, changes his location for him to recognize that it's not the people who brought you who can heal you. They've done our part. Our part of the process is to bring people to the Lord. Then that's where our part uh, it takes a break, not over, but takes a break. Bring him to the Lord and then we have to allow the Lord to do his work and then we still go back and check on people. Now watch this. There is a part that you can't do. You cannot heal his blindness. We cannot change our own focus. You, there are part of what God wants us to see that we have not the ability to see on our own. There are some things that will only be revealed to you by the touch of the Lord. I want you to get that in your spirit. There are some things that you're only going to see. There are some things that are only going to come into the fruition of your mind, into the, your mental capacity, that your, your even your, your physical I cannot take you places that your spiritual eye will take you. And so they take him to Jesus. Jesus says, let's go. Takes him away from the people. That's the first thing I want you to see. The second thing I want you to see that the Bible says Jesus, they ask of Jesus to touch him. And he does. But the touch that they participate and that they focus on and often we focus on, which is part of the text, that God has given us the favor to change our focus. But watch this. Our focus is usually on the part of when he touches him to heal him. But that's not the first touch. The first touch is he touches him to lead him. Oh, you missed that. If you were here, I know you would be shouting with me. He first grabs his hand, touches him to lead him away from the people. In other words, before God can supply your need, you need to allow him to lead you. You need to be willing to follow before you're willing to swallow. You need to be willing to understand that God is trying to lead you to green pastures and lead you by still waters so that you can receive the blessing from being able to eat from green pastures and drink from still waters in order to be able to, to accept and to enjoy the blessings that come with where God has taken you. You need to be first uh, able to be led by God. And so the first touch is that God grabs his hand and then he leads him from other people. That one of the things that this pandemic has done for us, it, it has led us to a place of isolation. I told you that isolation is part of the process of getting you to elevation. That God has allowed this pandemic to separate us from some things that we have become accustomed to. If you really look at it, perhaps we have even become spoiled. We've even become dependable uh, or dependent on. And so he leads him away from people. Maybe in this pandemic, God has led us away from that which was normal, but only to refocus us, only to bring forth a favor in our life for us to see some things that perhaps we had began to take for granted. I know for me, 
I am appreciative. I tell y'all every week about the thing that I most, I miss the most. And the thing I miss the most is the thing that causes me to refocus on. I'm getting a little bit older, just a little bit. No old jokes. Don't text me or call me with these old jokes. But I'm getting a little bit older. And in my getting a little bit older, I have begun uh, to refocus, to appreciate some things uh, that perhaps I had taken for granted. I appreciate small conversations with my wife. I appreciate time with my children. I think I've always appreciated those things, but now I'm refocusing on those things. I've come to refocus that if I don't have anything else, what's most important to us is God and family. That you need to understand that some things that perhaps you've taken for granted you need to go back and refocus on those things. I appreciate, you know, I got a thing that I do every time my son takes my twins away from me. Uh, when they come to the house and they say it's time to go, I go into my tearful moments. And I pout and I murmur and I, 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 oh, I, I'm so devastated. And they give me these big old hugs in effort to make Papa feel better. I love them. I think I'll do that for the rest of my life to see if they continue to love me enough to give me these great big giant hugs. Tripp is getting a little bit older, my oldest grand boy. He's getting a little bit older, and uh, he's, but he's still at the point where he kisses Papa in the mouth. I know he's going to outgrow that, he's going to outgrow that, and he's going to kiss uh, his grandpa on the, on the jaw, and then he'll stop kissing me period. But while it's lasting, I appreciate hugs and kisses from my babies. I appreciate being able to see their faces and being able, maybe God is refocusing us on some things that should be important. Maybe we got caught up so much on the things outside of our home that God is using this time to refocus us on the things that are inside our home. He pulls this man away from his crowd away from his norm. In the city of Bethesda, the city was busy. The city was noisy. And all those busy things and noisy things for a blind man can become distracting. Watch this. Perhaps we have been too busy. Perhaps our life has been too noisy. And perhaps those things have caused us to lack focus on the things that, sh that should be important to us. Perhaps the busyness and the noisiness of our, no our old norm has caused us to be distracted from being able to see God, to hear God, to stay focused on the Lord. And so perhaps God is using these things to pull us away from those things that could be a distraction. Again, by no means am I saying God brought forth this pandemic. I am not a believer of that. You don't have to call me. You don't have to text me. You, it, I'm not going to argue with you about it. I have my belief and I'm going to stick to it. My God is a good God. He is not the author of such junk. I do believe in God's permissive will. And I do believe that these things happen as a result of God's permissive will. But I believe that God is good and in his goodness, he cannot be bad. And so by this, by God permitting these things to happen uh, and it has caused us. But I do believe that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. And so what is God getting good out of this? What is it that's good about it? Refocusing the ability to refocus on the things that should have always been important to us to move us from the busyness and the noisiness of life to get us to be more focused and less distracted so that we can fulfill the purpose that God has rendered into each of our lives. And so this man is pulled away and then watch the process that it, first the Lord changes his location, leads him out of the village, leads him away from this busyness, this noisiness, this distracting part of his life. And now he can focus on Jesus. And then the Lord does something else in the process. 
The text says the Lord spit on him. Now, as I as I as I studied this part, the text is tailored to teach us that the spit is unusual to some. But I told you in chapter seven, God had used spit also in the same book. It was believed that in those times that spittle was used as a medicinal purpose, uh, used by those who was believed to have a uh, healing power. And in uh, those who were believed to be able to have healing power, people had heard of these things being used. Some even believed that it was a form of magic. But I want to suggest to you that in the text, God is not trying to show him a magical trick, but he's trying to show him a miracle technique. You'll get that in your spirit later on. It's not a magical trick. It's a miracle technique. I want you to know you should stop looking for the magic in your life and start looking for the miracles that God is bringing forth in your life. He, he takes this man and he touches this man. He spits on him and then he touches him. Now, watch this. For a blind man, a touch is more important than noise. Now I want you to get that. Uh, a touch is more important than the noise. This man needs a touch more than he needs the noise that he was used to. Now, now that brings me again back to us that perhaps what, what we need to understand that what's more important to us is not the noise of a congregation. Even though I miss, oh my goodness, I miss it. I miss amens. I miss the mere practice of preaching that's part of the call and response part of preaching, where the preacher says something and people say something back. That is our norm. Greater New Liberty is a noisy church. And when you come back, don't act funny with me. I want you to remain a noisy church. I, I, I miss, I start to name all of my shouters, all of my praises. I miss, I miss my people who run out the choir stand and run around the church. I miss shouting John going up under the pews. I miss, I miss all of my runners, all of my holler, my hollering people. I miss that. I know your voices. I know where you sit. I know I'm, I'm used to it. I miss Andre. I do know your name. So don't think he just said a boy that runs out of the choir. Andre, I do know your name. I, I'm, I'm just saying, I didn't want to call names because I know somebody's going to say, you didn't mention me. All of y'all, I miss our call and respond of worship service. But perhaps a period of break from the noise causes us to refocus on the things that should be very important to us. The touch. The touch of God. Understanding that God's touch is far more important than the noise. Now watch this. He gets him away from his norm. He moves, his, moves him. He changes his location. But then in the process, he also challenges him to look. Part of the process. In the process, he changes his location. But then he challenges him to look. He says, he says, look and see. Tell me if you see anything. Listen, look and tell me if you see anything. Look and tell me if you see anything. Here's what that reminds me of, that that if he challenges him to look, then evidently the boy had seen before. The boy says the man says, yes, I see. I see uh, men as trees. Watch this, which means evidently he was not born blind because he would not have known what men look like. He would not have known what trees look like. And so watch this, that oftentimes our focus is not the revelation of something new, but it's the appreciation for something we've already seen. Perhaps in God giving us the favor of focus, he's not trying to render into you a new revelation, a new blessing, but to better cause us to appreciate what we were already able to see. 
Perhaps he wants us to appreciate being able to worship together. Now that you're not able to worship together, maybe we will appreciate worship. Maybe those of us who've been attending Bedside Baptist will change our membership and we will go back to being a part of a congregation, being active in our church, going to work in ministry, finding needs and supplying needs. Watch this. He he says to him, he said, yeah, I can see, but watch this. I see dimly. I see men as trees. Instead of seeing men as trees, the Lord really wants him to see a tree as a man. I told you about that tree last Sunday, that, that Jesus Christ, the tree of life, is who we ought to be focusing on. He see men as trees walking. He see men Bigger than he see God. Men, huge, so big they look like trees. But he doesn't want men to look bigger in your life than he looks in your life. And so God says, watch this, a part of the process. A part of the process is that you see, but you see partially. And so what I need to do is touch you again. That's a beautiful part of the process. Because Philippians uh, chapter one, verse six says, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians one and six, that whatever God began, he will continue until it's finished. In other words, he doesn't stop. In imperfection. He doesn't stop when you can see dimly. If he has to touch you again, he will. Which brings me to my last point. It, 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 that, that in this, there is the presentation of a need. There is a process that is necessary. But then there is principles that are never ending. This man now experienced the favor of God. That God loved him so much that if he needs to touch him again, and you ought to be shouting right where you are, that your favor is so much uh, present in your life that if God needs to touch you again, if he needs to share grace with you again, if he needs to share mercy with you again, if he needs to render another touch in your life, God is so much in love with you that he has enough favor in you that if he has to do it again, he'll do it again. Now that needs to bless you right there because if you know that he'll do it again, you testify that he's done it before. And and if he's done it before and you know that he continues to love you, then you need to remind yourself that he will do it again. That's the blessing of flavor. The blessing of favor is that God loves us so much that if our focus didn't come to us in full fruition the first time, if we can dimly see, that's not the way God wants us to see. He wants us to see with a, a mature eye, a perfected eye, an eye that allows us to see God's totality of his purpose in your life. And so if you cannot see in its totality the purpose of your life, then you need to ask God, please touch me again. God touches him again and then ask the man, so now tell me what you see. The man said, I can see clearly now. That's what God's intention for your life is. That's what God wants us to do in this pandemic. God wants us to see him clearly. If your sight is dim, if this has been such a catastrophe in your life that it has dimmed your view of who your God is, your prayer right now should be, Lord, touch me again that I might be able to see you clearly and that in my seeing you clearly, I might live a life that's pleasing in your eyes. Lord, touch me again. I'm Pastor Daryl Shack here at the Greater New Liberty Church. 250 East Range Road. I thank you for tuning in to Tegan Time one more time. Listen, I want to say to you, as I'm out of time, but I'm not out of word, I want to say to you that uh, God is doing a tremendous work in all of our lives, individually and corporately. So don't get tired, don't give up, don't throw in the towel, but remain focused. I want you to understand that we must pray for 
focus. We must pray that God will allow us to remain faithful and to remain focused in such times as these so that we can continue to be who God calls us to be and do the things that God has called us to do. So the big question is, okay, Reb, when are we going back in? When are we going back in? I have prayed to God and I believe that I have received my answer. We are coming back into the sanctuary on the first Sunday in June. The first Sunday in June will be our reopening ceremony. We will come in and we will come in uh, with two services, eight o'clock and 10 o'clock. Two services, eight o'clock and 10 o'clock. This gives us a chance to continue to work out the kinks and to get things in order uh, for, for you sp spiritually and physically uh, that we might prepare. I felt as if I was rushing things a little bit in my first announcement of us coming in on this coming Sunday and I think we need a little more time. I need a little more time to prepare us and prepare our church, prepare my staff, to prepare our leaders, to prepare us all that we might be able to do this and do this in a way that I think is safe and is pleasing to God. So uh, the, there it is. The first Sunday in June will be our first Sunday. You don't have to call and ask me. I'm telling you right now, first Sunday in June will be our first Sunday coming in. Um, and what we will do is uh, we will start with eight o'clock service and then we will have our 11 o'clock service. No Sunday school as we noted. I'm trying to, uh, to work something out. Um, about to go into a meeting right now that uh, we're trying to work some things out that we can do uh, some type of Sunday school and or Bible study. Uh, on uh, which we're going to start back Wednesday night Bible study also after the first Sunday. The Wednesday after the first Sunday will be our first Bible study uh, on Wednesday nights. But we're trying to work out something with Sunday school that we can do it on Zoom or Microsoft 10. Uh, my son is teaching me these new terms and uh, these things that are available to us. My staff is doing some research on what's available and what's best for us to be able to do these things. And so uh, I'm trying to work those things out be patient with me this gives us a chance to do so and so I want you to know that uh, we are putting these things in uh, in uh, into action so uh, that's it that's our date the first Sunday in June we look forward to meeting with you uh, we will we will give you more announcements uh, as, as the time come again we're gonna do two services eight and ten and then if need be we will add a third service which will be at 12 o'clock but we will start off at our eight and ten eight and ten o'clock services they will we will have the opening uh, by devotion and then after our call to worship the opening by we will have our devotion and then we will have uh, the praise team to sing uh, and or a worship leader and then uh, we will have prayer and the receiving of our gifts and offering. And then I will preach and that will be uh, the end of our, our service. And we will try to, each service will be about an hour, an hour to 15 minutes so that we would have time to uh, get the sanctuary in order to sanitize uh, our main areas and so far and so on. And then prepare for the next crowd to come in so that we can do our 10 o'clock services. And then if need be, if we still have uh, a lot of people who've not had a chance to come to worship service who would like to, we will then add a third service, which would be at 12 o'clock. And so that's our plans starting the first Sunday in June. Pass on the word, get everybody excited. And uh, listen, uh, we will continue to do our online services. At, at that time, even when we go back in, we will continue online services for we realize there are some who may not be uh, able to come out and who, who's not, who it may not be safe for them to still come among people. And if so, we wanna provide a way for them to still be able to get a part of worship service in. And so thank you again for tuning in to our TGAN time services. I'm your pastor, Daryl Shack here at the Greater New Liberty Church. May God continue to bless you and keep you. I love you all and I miss you so much. Can't wait to see you on the first Sunday. Remember, trust God and never doubt.